Analysis of Waesong-18, North Korea's Monster Solid Fuel Mobile Intercontinental Ballistic Missile North Korea tests launched a Waesong-18 Solid Fuel Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, ICBM, for the first time on Thursday, April 13, 2023. North Korean State TV released video footage of the Waesong-18 Solid Fuel ICBM launch, showing it being cold-launched from its transporter erector launcher, TEL, canister on top of a specially constructed and likely reinforced new garden area of a mansion compound near Pyongyang. The three-stage missile reached a height of 3,000, a range of 1,000 kilometers and flew more than 40 minutes to the east, meaning that this ICBM on a normal trajectory, known as minimum energy trajectory, which represents the maximum range for a missile, would have a range of about 7,500 kilometers on a non-rotating Earth and in the absence of second-order effects, which in turn means that Wasong-18 was significantly underperforming. However, this underperformance was actually intentional. Wasong-18 will likely have a range of 11,000 to 12,000 kilometers on a normal trajectory once fully operational. The flight of the missile on a lofted trajectory enables continuous transfer of data about the status of the missile in particular when stages separate as well as warhead survivability to the ground station when ascending, a critical phase for missile body, and returning, a critical phase for warheads having to resist huge amount of heat and pressure, to the earth. The burning of the first stage engine, as can be seen in the footage, is uniform and strong, which shows a reliable grain design for such a large diameter and heavy engine as well as good solid fuel quality. That means using fine and ultra-fine fuel, in micro and sub-micrometer scale, with addition of nanothermites which boost the burning process. A unique capability that not many nations possess. First stage burn time should be around 65 seconds, because a smart way to design a three-stage solid ICBM of that size and performance would be that configuration we are seeing, and the characteristics that follow from this choice. As you can see, other countries, Soviets and the USA, had opted for similar choices in the past. Wasong-18 is similar to the Russian Topol-M missile which is also a cold-launched, three-stage, solid-propellant, silo-based or road-mobile intercontinental ballistic missile. The Topol-M missile's length is 22.7 meters and the first stage has a body diameter of 1.9 meters. The mass at launch is 47,200 kg, including the 1,200 kg payload. Topol-M carries a single nuclear warhead but the design is compatible with MIRV warheads. According to Chief Designer Yuri Solomonov, the missile can carry four to six warheads along with decoys and the body of the missile is made by winding carbon fiber, allowing for considerable reduction of dead weight and consequently increasing the range of the missile or payload. Therefore, similar numbers can be expected for the North Korean version of this strategic solid-fuel ICBM. The Korean Central News Agency, KCNA, on Friday called the launch a miraculous success and an improvement on the country's ability to mount a quick nuclear counterattack. It is the country's first solid-fuel ICBM and comes after years of increasingly frequent testing of solid-fuel short-range ballistic missiles. North Korea conducted a static or ground test of the Wasong-18 first-stage engine in December 2022 with thrust vector control TVC, technology. TVC technology allows for more thrust in comparison to jet vanes and lighter missiles. Smaller existing North Korean solid-fuel missiles use jet vanes for directional control. These are ill-suited for larger and more powerful motors due to greater thermal degradation of the vanes, which are placed directly in the exhaust flow. The tested engine has a thrust of 140 tons, absolutely suitable for a multi-stage intercontinental ballistic missile. The development speed of North Korea is breathtaking as can be seen by just looking at on some key dates. On January 2021, 8th WPK Congress report came out. The report describes development and introduction of hypersonic gliding flight warheads in a short period, push ahead with the development of solid-fuel engine-propelled intercontinental. Underwater and ground ballistic rockets as scheduled, 
and possess a nuclear-powered submarine and an underwater launch nuclear strategic weapon which will be of great importance in raising the long-range nuclear striking capability. On December 2022, we witnessed the static test of a new solid fuel motor for the first stage. On February 2023, ICBM Associated Tells with new canisters were shown to the public and finally on April 2023, first solid fuel ICBM test of North Korea was conducted in only four months since the static test. The development path is clear, and in parallel, work is underway to increase plutonium and uranium production to produce much-needed fissile materials for a significant number of nuclear warheads in the months and years ahead. Solid propellant missiles do not need to undergo lengthy fueling prior to launch, and can thus be prepared and moved into launch position more quickly than liquid propellant missiles, increasing the chances of evading interception. According to Friday's KCNA report, the test was primarily aimed at confirming the performance of the high-thrust solid propellant multistage motors, the stage separation technology, and the reliability of various functional control systems. The North Korean military confirmed restricting the maximum speed of the missile through delayed stage separation and motor reactivation, explaining the intentional underperformance of the missile, which aggravates accurate estimate of the actual capability of the missile. The first stage flight was standard but that the second and third stages were set on a high-angle trajectory mode to avoid hitting other countries or even falling on North Korean population centers as it flew from near Pyongyang out toward the Sea of Japan. The first stage fell safely 10 kilometers off the Hodo Peninsula on the east coast and the second stage into the sea 335 kilometers off the coast of Orang County further north. It remains unclear why North Korea would launch the ICBM on a normal angle before boosting to a more vertical angle. Since the first stage is a single flex nozzle type, roll thrusters are used to stabilize the missile while boosting. This was also seen on the Iranian Q-100 space launch vehicle on November 5, 2022. Since Iran has also conducted extensive testing of solid fuel engines in recent years, it is very likely that the Iranians have developed a similar but more tactical three-stage solid-fuel intercontinental ballistic missile that carries a smaller payload. For more information, see the description below. Adding the Wasong-18 to the country's arsenal will greatly reinforce the components of North Korea's strategic deterrent, rapidly increase the utility of the nuclear counterattack posture, and innovate the practicality of the offensive military strategy. This launch mean a major stride in North Korea's weapons development because solid-fueled missiles are faster to launch, easier to use and harder to detect than liquid-powered ones. Although they have some downsides, however the advantages of a solid-fuel missile are far greater. The Wasong-18 launch was a mid-stage test and until the North Korea fully develops a solid-fueled ICBM, it would need more time and effort until it gets around to perfecting the craft. Therefore. Such test launches will be more frequent in the future, as was the case with liquid-fueled road mobile Wasong-17. However, it is pretty obvious that not much time is needed until declaring the Wasong-18 operational, taking into account how rapidly the North Koreans develops technologies for which Soviets and Americans needed decades. But this is another story. The Wasong-18 would further support an aggressive military strategy that promises to maintain nuke for nuke and an all-out confrontation for an all-out confrontation against North Korea's rivals. Solid propellants are a mixture of fuel and oxidizer. Metallic powders such as aluminium often serve as the fuel, and ammonium perchlorate, which is the salt of perchloric acid and ammonia, is the most common oxidizer. The fuel and oxidizer are bound together by a hard rubbery material and packed into a metal or fiber casing. When solid propellant burns, oxygen from the ammonium perchlorate combines with aluminium to generate enormous amounts of energy and temperatures of more than 2,760 degrees Celsius, creating thrust and lifting the missile from the launch pad. Solid fuel is dense and burns quite quickly, generating thrust over a short time. Separately, it can remain in storage for an extended period. Solid-fuel missiles are easier and safer to operate. 
They also require less logistical support, making them harder to detect and more survivable than liquid fuel weapons. In contrast, a liquid fueled ICBM would need to undergo a fueling process before launch. That could take hours, giving an adversary time to identify, react, and neutralize it before its launch. Solid fueled missiles are fueled from the point of manufacture. They therefore allow operators to maintain a high state of readiness and the potential to launch within minutes, depending on basing. Thanks for watching and see you next time.